even when you buy a new mirror, it comes used. Think about it. So today, let's get around that idea and build a fresh take on a full length mirror on Timber Biscuit. So this build starts off like many do with breaking down my lumber. And for this project, I'm using four quarter walnut and five quarter walnut boards. And here I'm just looking at the grain pattern, trying to map out what boards I wanna use and in what location I think they'll work best. Now the case for this piece has two big waterfall edges on the rounded miters. So I wanted to make sure that I left enough space on my boards so I could cut those miters and get that waterfall edge later on. Once I had my tree slices trimmed down to a rough length, I could join them at the joiner and then plane them flat at the planer. Milling the lumber is where I feel like I really get to know the wood and I get to see that green pattern pop out and the boards really start showing me where I should place them in the project. And I'll admit that these boards didn't have the grain pattern that I was really looking for, but given the current state of things, it was what I could get. So I tried to take advantage of the nicest boards and orient them to the front of the piece. So the first thing I needed to do was make a few panels. So I tried to retain as much of the boards as I possibly could, only trimming off as much material as was necessary. From there, I finalized the grain pattern and then laid out a few dominoes. Whenever you're doing waterfall edge pieces, you really want to be mindful of where your dominoes are placed because you obviously don't want them to be in a place where you're going to cut that miter later on. So just keep that in mind. And dominoes or biscuits are not necessary for every build, but these are some rather large panels. So these are less for structure and more for aligning the faces. From there, I could glue up the panels. For most of this project, I'm using Type On 2 Dark just because it dries darker and works better to hide the glue lines in walnut from my experience. When it comes to panel glue ups, I like to use enough clamps so that they meet at 45 degrees across each panel. Meaning that if you took a 45 degree square at one point of a clamp, that line would intersect with the next clamp. And once the glue had set up for about 15 minutes, I use an old chisel to scrape it away. With my set of clamps free, I could use them on the larger glue up, which went a lot like the first, only larger. All right, so I pulled the panels out of the clamps and next we're going to trim them down at the table saw to their final width. And then we're gonna go ahead and lay out and rough cut the rest of our remaining pieces. So let's go ahead and get these trimmed out. All right, so here I'm trimming down the backside edge of the panels. Again, I'm trying to preserve that front edge where I kept that nicer lumber. And it's here where I definitely recommend using a feather board because it helps keep the piece against the fence as cutting these large panels can get a little awkward. From there, it was on to cutting the side stand pieces as well as the frame that would hold the mirror. As with all my projects, if you'd like to build this one yourself, I'll have detailed plans linked in the description below. And the side stand and frame are where we get into that one inch thick material, which is why I started with that five quarter. These are a bit beefier and should be able to hold the weight of the mirror as well as the frame. Not to mention it should give the case a longer shelf life. Yes, that was a furniture joke, which I rated E for everyone. So with my crosscut blade installed, I trimmed down one edge of the shelf, then marked out the other side and cut a clean edge on it. This shelf will get some tenons on either side for the stop dados, and these knots were really close to making it an issue, but thankfully they were just outside of the path. Next, I laid out and trimmed down the stand pieces to their final length. All right, so finally it was time to get started on that rounded waterfall edge. Keep in mind that when you make a case like this, you're gonna end up using more material than you actually need because you have to offset each miter for the waterfall look. But I'll explain that more in detail in a second. From there, I tilted my blade to 44.9 degrees, just to make sure that these miter joints are really tight on the outside. Though in this design, you really just wanna shoot for as perfect a miter joint as you can get. The first cut here is for the right side of the case. Then I can flip the panel over and make the next cut for the center of the case, making sure to get as close to my previous cut as possible. Once I marked out the length for the center panel, I can rotate the workpiece and cut that. The remaining cut is for the left side of the panel, which again gets flipped so that the miters match. I then flush trim the bottoms of the panels so that they would sit flat.
All right, so now that we have all the miters cut for our box and we have that nice flowing grain pattern, I can use my router to cut in a few stop dados so we can install that lower shelf, which will hold our drawer box. So let's go ahead and get those laid out. To cut the dados, I'll use a half inch down cut bit and set the depth of cut to a quarter inch. And hey, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It lets the algorithm know to share the video with other people and helps out a ton. So thank you. Now I'm using a guide rail to hold the router straight during the cut. And I like to start by plunging at my stop and then working the bit towards the back side of the workpiece. This way I exit the cut in an area that will get covered up later. And I also like to cut the dado prior to the tenon so that I can test fit the tenon and get it just right. So with my dados routed into the workpiece, I could set up the dado stack, which is like one of those, but wait, there's more moments. I like to cut the tenons just over size of what I actually want them to be, so I can use a hand plane to dial them in later. And though I don't show it here, I did check the fit on this piece before committing to cutting the tenon on both sides. So with my dados and tenons cut, I used a router plane to clean up the dados and a shoulder plane to clean up the tenons. Next, it was time to trim a notch onto the shoulder at the front of the panel. This is where the tenon will meet the stop dado and overhang, creating the nice clean joint. I recently built a console table using a bunch of stop dados, so if you'd like to see a more detailed look at stop dados, definitely check that out. Once I've made a small relief cut, I just use a bandsaw to remove the excess. Again, here airing on the side of caution, I leave this thick so that I can trim it back with a chisel. And if you want to know more about a specific process or why I do what I do or don't do what I don't do, just drop me a comment. I reply to every single one of them. So let me know if you have any questions or if you just want to say hi. Alright, so with the dados all cleaned up, I could lay out the dominoes for the miters. And since I'll be rounding over those miters, these dominoes are definitely structural. So I make sure to bury them to the inside edge of the box, this way I don't run into them with the router later on. So earlier I had mentioned I was using Type On 2 Dark for the majority of the build, and here I'm using Type On 2 Extend. This just gives me a little bit more working time since I have a lot of clamps to set up for this piece. All right, so now that the box is out of clamps, I need to go ahead and clean up the outside edge, and then I'm gonna take a rabbiting bit on my router, and I'm gonna cut a rabbit onto the interior edge of the case. This will allow that drawer front to nest and give us the nice rounded corners that we're looking for. This is where leaving the pieces just a hair oversized comes in handy because I can plane back to the size I want, even though here I'm taking off less than a thousandth of an inch. So with my front edge cleaned up, I glued up a quick little jig so that I could add some support for my router base. And here I'm just using a rabbiting bit and taking two passes and I'm removing material to the thickness of the drawer front. When I got to the lower shelf, the guide bearing obviously ran into it, so I'll go back in a minute and clean that up with a chisel. Oh, and air compressors are great for cleaning off yourself when you leave the shop. And right here I had an issue and my bit took a chunk out of my previous cut, so I ended up having to fix that. But again, I'll show you how I did that here in a second. So with the front of the case wrapped up, I could do the same procedures to the rear. This time, I only needed to take one pass though, because the rear gets a smaller rabbit. As with the front, I had to avoid the shelf with the rear, so I used a chisel to clean up the small notch that was remaining.
and then I use a router plane around the entirety of the rabbit just to clean it up and make sure the depth was the same all the way around. This is really great for taking out any of those small deviations that may occur when the router tilts one way or the other on the edge. Back at the front I did the same thing, only this time I had to clean up the notches as well as fix the mistake I made earlier. So I'll start here with the notches and a chisel and work my way to a router plane. And then it was on to my mistake. And to do that, I chiseled out two rectangular pieces, then filled them in with some wood glue and reshaped the corner. Boom. You never know it's there unless, of course, you post it on YouTube. All right, so now it was time for those massive roundovers. And to do that, I'll again turn to my router and a large roundover bit. Doing this really emphasizes that wrap around grain pattern. Some of you may think this is kind of risky structurally, but there's enough material there to support the case and the design's worth it. Anyway, you get the point. Or is it the round? So with the right side of the case done, I could do the same to the left. I feathered out the curves with some 220 grit sandpaper, and then it was onto the frame. The frame that holds the mirror just gets a nice large rabbit. So to cut that, I'm gonna use my table saw. I'll make one cut in the face of the frame first, then turn the piece on edge and take my second cut, which will remove that material, leaving me with a nice quarter inch relief. Oh, and just as a side note, you could also do this procedure with a dado stack. It was just quicker for me to do it this way. There was a small amount of material remaining from that first cut, but that was easily cleaned up with a router plane. Not to mention, satisfying. From there, I could plane out the saw marks from the inside and outside of the frame pieces. This will save me some time sanding later. Next, it was time to cut the miters for the frame. Now, unfortunately, my blade didn't quite make it high enough to cut all the way through the frames, so I finished up the cuts with a flush trim saw. When I'm laying out frames like this, I really just measure to the outside of the frame. But because this mirror is going to be sitting inside the rabbit, I had to be careful to make sure that the interior measurement would match the overall dimension of my mirror. So once I was confident that I was going to hit that mark, and then went ahead and repeated that process for each section of the frame. I do prefer using a sled like this for extra long pieces, but if you don't have a sled, a miter gauge would work just fine. So since this is such a large frame, I went ahead and added some dominoes into the miters. I had originally planned on doing keys, but I felt like the hidden floating tenons worked better for the design. Let me know what you think. Would you have used keys, or do you like the domino? From there I used a combination of squares and a strap clamp to hold my miters tight and keep everything square. All right, so the last major component is the stand that's gonna hold the frame to the blower case. And we're gonna get that cut out here at the table saw and then we'll get to work on the drawer. Now, this angle is pretty extreme. So if you don't feel comfortable doing it on a miter gauge or if you don't trust your miter gauge, I would recommend making a sled and cutting it that way, which I've done in past videos like the desk or bookcase if you wanna check those out. To stay consistent with that rounded look, I went ahead and rounded over the corners on the stand. And to do that, I'm just using my disc sander to round over one edge, then flip the piece over and round over the other. This way I get an even round over on both sides.
And then once again, I could turn to my number four to clean up the edges. To attach the forward support to the rear support, I'm again using dominoes. So here I'm laying out those dominoes. And these don't need to be perfectly in the center, but I want to use as much material as possible just to make sure that it's a secure joint. Then I can use some CA glue to glue on my offcuts from earlier to create a 90 degree joint for the glue up. Once the glue was dry, I knocked off the block, sanded it down, and then brought it over to the router table. So next I added an eighth inch round over to all the exterior edges of the stand. Now this is just going to soften that edge a bit, as well as carry that rounded theme. I didn't round over the interior of the stand so that when the frame and stand meet, there's a nice seamless line. Next it was time to get to work on the drawer box. And I'm using half inch Baltic birch plywood for the box and Bloom soft close hinges. So I'll build this box like I have many in the past, cutting out my front, back, and sides at one time, and then adding in the groove for the drawer bottom. Once I had my pieces cut to length, I could trim out a notch in the rear panel for the drawer slides and then cut out my bottom. If you'd like to support the channel, I invite you to join my Patreon, where you'll get discounts on plans, merch, plus some other behind the scenes features. So if you're interested, click the link in the description. And for those who've already joined, thank you. I like having really clean looking drawer sides, so I'll run those a length of the drawer front to back, and then use a few 22 gauge nails to pin them in place while the glue dries. I'll throw a small dab of wood putty into those pinholes and it'll hide them really well. So with the drawer box drying, I went ahead and drilled an anchor point all the way through the frame that would hold the mirror. This will help conceal the fasteners from the front and side profile of the piece. From there I did the same with the stand, only this time I drilled smaller diameter holes using a drill block, then used a quarter 20 wood tap to cut in some threads. This will alleviate the need for threaded inserts. From there I could lay out the stand on the side of the case. So I scribed a line around the stand, then removed the stand and laid out the holes for the anchor points, and matched those same holes to the case. This will allow the stand to be removed, as well as make this a knockdown piece, so when transporting the piece it can easily be packed up, or if in the future you don't like what you see, you can just take the mirror off altogether. Kidding. So with my quarter inch holes drilled in the case, I could pre-drill and tap the holes in the stand. Now unfortunately at this point I didn't have fasteners that were the right length, so I just used some of the longer ones to test fit the stand and the frame, and luckily that worked out okay. So I turned my focus to the drawer slides. And these drawer slides are the Bloom Professional drawer slides, which are a little different than the ones I've used in the past and they don't quite line up with the jigs that I have, but that wasn't a huge obstacle. And whenever I'm installing these soft close hinges, I always get excited about the first test, which thankfully went well. So from there I moved on to the pole for the drawer front, and I'm using a bowl bit to cut in a small hidden pole on the bottom of the drawer face. This allows for a nice and clean drawer front and a really nice positive feel to the action. From there I could cut the drawer front and rear panel to their final length. And for inset drawer fronts like this, I shoot for a 32nd of an inch gap all the way around the drawer.
Once I had my drawer front and rear panel cut to length, I went back to the disc sander to round over the corners. To attach drawer fronts, I just like to use some double-sided tape on the back of the face to hold it in place while I add some clamps. I also add a few 30-second of an inch shims around the borders just to make sure that it's consistent all the way around. Then two screws will hold the drawer front in place. like a glove. My rear panel was a little thick, so I just ran it through the drum sander to thin it out until it sat flush in the rabbit. Next, I rounded over the outside edge of the frame just so that when anyone grabs it to adjust the tilt, there's not super sharp edges. Then it was finally time to drop in the mirror. And to attach the mirror to the frame, I'm using construction adhesive. Once I had a small bead laid around the perimeter, with the help of my wife, I could place in the mirror. I did have the tiniest of bows at the center of the mirror, so I went ahead and added a clamp to squeeze it out. While that's set up, I sanded and prepped all the surfaces for finish. Any little knots I filled in with some Starbond CA glue. And if you haven't tried this stuff out and you'd like to, I have a discount code down in the description. From there I could apply the finish, and I'm using a penetrating oil on this piece because I really like the natural look of the penetrating oil, plus it's a plant-based finish and it's super easy to repair should the piece ever need it. Two coats, 24 hours, and an Amazon delivery later, the fasteners were here and I could attach the stand to the case. The final piece to go on was the rear of the case, which could have gone on sooner, but I wanted to take advantage of the fact that it was open when attaching the stand. I'm blown away by how this one turned out. The curved miters and drawer front, the waterfall edge, the knockdown hidden fasteners, the smooth action of the drawer slides, not to mention the adjustable full length mirror. It all just came together beautifully. So if you enjoyed this project, check out some of my other projects starting with this video here next. Subscribe so you do not miss the next one and I'll see you next time.